Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. Fiance, female 31, said her ex is the love of her life. To be honest, I'm in a bit of a haze right now. My fiance, female 31, and I, male 33, got engaged last October after being in a relationship for five years. Everything has been wonderful and I can honestly say that I've never encountered someone that compares to her. She is without a doubt the joy of my life. I've known her for most of my life. We grew up on the same street, just around the corner. Her mother and father still live in the same home, and I still live in the house I grew up in, which my mother gave to me when she died in 2014. We haven't formally moved in together yet, but for all intents and purposes, she is. Her parents are quite near to her, and she still has her bedroom there, where she may sometimes spend the night, but she is never away from here. Anyway, this morning I decided to go take a trip down to the shops to get some items, and about halfway down, a 15-minute walk, I realized I had forgotten my face mask. Masks are necessary in stores here since July 10th, so I had to return back and grab mine. When I stepped in the door to get the mask from the kitchen table, I heard her on the phone in the living room, and she said, Yes, but David will always be the love of my life. David is her ex-boyfriend. I don't know much about him, but I do know they were in a relationship for two years before we began dating, and it ended a year before we met. In addition, he dumped her. I simply grabbed my mask and headed back out, and as soon as I got to the shops, I started feeling strange, and I had to sit down because my mind was racing in a million different places. I finally arrived home and told her I was unwell and sent her back to her parents' place since I didn't want her there while I was sick. To be honest, I'm presently laying in my bed, unsure of what to do. I knew she didn't do anything wrong. She couldn't cheat on me or go out of her way to upset me, but what's heard can't be unheard. She essentially said that the guy she has consented to marry isn't a match for an ex she hasn't seen in six years. The fact that she said that he would always be her love indicates that it's an empty game. Her heart has already been captured, and there's nothing I can do to reverse that. What would happen if he reappeared in her life? You can't say no to the love of your life when they come knocking and I'd be discarded faster than yesterday's leftovers. So, what should I do? Tell her I was listening in on her and overheard her saying that shit. Just terminate the relationship with no apparent reason, such as, well, it's not you, it's me and so on. Is it okay if I swallow my pride and pretend I didn't hear it? Everything has been amazing, but there is no way on earth I would want to be someone's second option, particularly when her ex is the one on her mind who she would undoubtedly be with if she could. I'm considering just stating that it isn't working between us. She's now texted me about coming over tonight to mother and treat me since I'm the sickie. That's a joke. Story 2. I've been cheating on my wife. Long. Yes, I've been cheating on my wife for the last two months with the first lady I've ever loved. In fifth and sixth grade, my elementary school crush and I were quite close. I moved to the United States in fifth grade, and she was my interpreter for the whole school year. We were incredibly close the whole time, and when we discovered we lived nearby, we hung together virtually every day. Before sixth grade began, I took a test to see how good my English was, and by the time it was over, my English was perfect, but I purposefully failed the test in order for the school to pair me with another student translator, and when I found out I was getting a translator, I requested her again, and boom, we are sitting together again. Sixth grade was similar to sixth grade in that we were usually together but this time I had fallen passionately in love with her and couldn't get over it. I thought it was simply a crush, but this lady made me feel as nothing else in the world ever had. The instructor gave us one more job on the last day of sixth grade, which was to create a tiny mailbox for our friends to give us a few last words anonymously before departing to the same or a different middle school. Of course, I sent her a letter. It was brief and to the point. All I said was be my world, and she answered, you make my world beautiful. I knew it was her and she knew it was me, but we didn't say a single word to one another because we were young and foolish. That summer was all about having fun with her. We would spend the night at each other's houses, of course, with other friends and parents checking in and out, and snuggle the whole time. She comes racing to me in the morning, in the middle of seventh grade, weeping because her parents had acquired a new home across town. We didn't live in a huge city, but it was a long way for two 13-year-olds kids at the time. On her final day, we decided to skip school and return to my house. 
We basically spent the whole day staring into one another's eyes and stating how much we missed our time together. Because I was foolish and scared shitless, I didn't tell her I loved her and wanted her to be mine. A week later, she calls and we speak on the phone from 4 p.m. to approximately 2 a.m., telling me about her new school and other things. We used to phone on a daily basis, but when ninth grade rolled around, she informed me she was beginning to develop feelings for this man. Of course, it crushed my heart, but I ignored it. She continued apologizing to me for having affections for someone else, but I reminded her it was her life, not mine. High school arrives, and since it is a tiny town, there is only one high school. The man she was with was a jealous jerk, and luckily for him, we had four out of seven courses that year. Every time we spoke, her man's pals would tell me, and he'd come over to me yelling like a normal jealous male. Because of him, we didn't appear to hang around in Converse as much in 11th and 12th grade. When I graduated from high school, I met my wife on this website called MySpace. I tell her about a girl I met online who lives approximately four hours away. As I informed her about the issue with her, I watched her heart break. Her husband discovers the truth and utterly isolates her from me. Heartbroken once again, I relocated to the large city and finally married my wife. After 10 years, I'm content with my wife, my work, and my wonderful child. My child had this tiny parent-teacher meeting day at a park about two and a half months ago. This is where it all began. The instructor is speaking, and everyone is paying attention to her. When I see a man cross from the opposite side to the side I was on. I was listening to the teacher speak, and all I could hear was, it's him. I did mind, but I did hear it. After the instructor finished, I heard my middle name yelled out. No one calls me by my middle name save my mother when she is furious at me and one other person I know. When I turned around, there she was, sobbing and staring at me with those eyes I'd never forgotten. I didn't even think twice before grabbing her and sobbing while hugging her close to my chest. After the dust settles, we return to our house for a barbecue with her high school boyfriend and her two children. The youngest child is in my son's class, so I knew we'd be seeing one other a lot. When we arrived back to my apartment, I realized I had forgotten something, so I had to go to the store. Her partner accompanied me, despite the fact that he had treated me like garbage. He began apologizing nonstop as soon as we got into my vehicle. He said that he was a total jerk to me because she was constantly talking about me and he was frightened of losing her to me. We got back and began cooking and chatting, and she and her family had just relocated here because our tiny town was becoming too crowded, so they had to relocate. We basically hang out every day after work, but all of my feelings for her began to resurface, stronger than ever. My wife and her got along so well that on the first day of school for the kids, we decided to let them ride the bus. Everyone went home once the bus departed. A few days later, I quit my work, so I was dropping my child off to school, and when the bus left, she and I would hang out at our home. We never went since they were busy unpacking and doing other things. So one day she asked me back to her house to show me around to show me around. When we arrive, we head inside. She began showing me around, and we arrived in the hallway, where she had a slew of photographs up on the walls. I see her parents and siblings all grown up, and then I see that the most prominent photographs are of me and her when we were younger. I stare at her for a long time, remembering how much I still adore her. I was so immersed in my thoughts that I whispered something to myself without realizing it and without thinking about it. I see you're still passionately in love with me as much as I'm still madly in love with you, I said. I thought I was saying in my brain, but I spoke it out loud. When she questioned if I was serious, I snapped out of it and felt my heart drop out of my. I looked at her and took it without a second thought. She looks at me and asks whether I married my wife so that I could forget about her. I was already in deep, so I responded yes, but I never forgot about her in the process, but I did fall in love with my wife. She tells me it's okay since she did the same thing with her ex-husband. We spoke about how we've always been in love with each other, but were too terrified to admit it. I went home pleased knowing she understood how much I still love her and how much she loves me. After a few days, I return while the kids are in school and so is at work. When we get her place, we begin making out in a really intense and passionate style that I have never done with my wife, and that's when it occurs. We finally made it to her bedroom and had asked this S was the most incredible, intense thing I've ever done in my life. It seemed like something out of a movie. We both sobbed as we finished. Nothing like this has ever happened, my wife and me. Since that moment, we've decided to be a couple. We chat about everything all day, every day.
It's as if we hadn't stopped chatting for ten years and all those sentiments had never departed. I know we're both wrong, but we can't stop ourselves. I absolutely adore her, and if I could go back in time and tell her, I would without a doubt. I don't feel guilty about doing this to my wife, and we'd try to stop, but it's like a narcotic I can't get enough of. I'm a jerk for cheating on such a wonderful wife and mother. I'm not sorry for what I did.